Hi, CGA 103 students. This is Professor Mary, and we're going to go over the lecture on typography today. So, um, typography really is the um, visual element of the written word. It's basically how letters are formed. And it's really part of our um, skills as a designer. So, the definition of typography is the arrangement, style, and appearance of letters, numbers, and symbols created in a design. Um, and we would call this typography or type design. And it's part of uh, the essential skills that you need to have as a new um, designer. So there's some certain terms that we need to know um, with regard to um, type design. And they're really um, the three terms that we need to know are legibility, readability, and appealing um, type design or the aesthetics of the design. Um, there's a great book that I love called Don't Make Me Think, and the author of that book really talks about getting um, some focus on type design as a critical way to get our messages out. And you know, I said this before, we are bombarded with hundreds of thousands of pieces of information a day, and we have to get our messages to stick, and the, the one great way to do that is through good type design. So the three major components of typography are legibility, readability, and aesthetics. So legibility is the ease in, with, in which a reader can recognize a character in a type. Um, so it's really kind of the minute part of it. It's like how the reader or the viewer can see one individual letter versus another. Um, and if we think back into when you were in kindergarten and you were just starting to learn your letters, um, you really had to, you know, think about which one was an A versus an E. Um, and as you became more proficient with that, you were able to um, recognize letters um, without much thinking. The next concept is readability. And this is the ease in which a reader can recognize words, sentences, and paragraphs. Um, so legibility is a part of readability. So legibility is the individual letters. And if you think about legibility, L, letters, that's how you can remember that. And readability is all the words, sentences, and paragraphs. So <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen pieces of text where it's difficult to read. Um, and that would be poor readability. So basically, when you're reading, how easy you can read um, a line, a paragraph, a sentence, is basically the concept of readability. Now, when you're a new reader, you read relatively slow. So when you think about back to kindergarten, first, second grade, when you were just starting to learn to read, you were really, really slow in terms of reading um, because your speed of perception um, was, was um, very slow because you had to really look at each letter and each word and sound it out. But as you became more proficient in readability, um, you are able to increase the speed of your perception of the words, um, also perception at a distance, um, perception uh, at a in peripheral vision. Um, also, this readability also has to do with um, you know how fast you read, how your eyes move across a design, and then also fatigue in reading. The aesthetics basically refers to the beauty of the type design which is, uh, comes down to the, the type of font you use, the size, and how the reader feels about the font, either consciously or unconsciously. All right, so the next thing we need to go over is um, the terms that you need to know as um, new designers. So the first term we have is called X height, and that's basically um, the lines in which um, the type is set. So let's think back to first grade when we had that great paper where we had the top line, the bottom line, and the dotted line in the middle. Um, the X height basically um, is that dotted line. Um, that bottom blue line that we um, had to put our type on or our characters on when we're writing, that's called the baseline. So it's an imaginary line that all type sits on. And that's an important um, concept because we measure a couple things from the baseline 
um, which we'll talk about in just a second. So from the baseline, we have characters that go below that line, and these are called descenders. So the example is the G and the J, and there are some numbers that also go below that baseline. Um, the opposite is true for things called ascenders. So here's the middle line is the X height, and things that go above that X height line or that middle line is, are called ascenders. So all capital letters are considered ascenders, and things that go up like the H or the T or the L, those are all considered ascenders. So here's a good example. Um, so here's that baseline, all right? Here are the descenders. Um, here's the top line, and here are our ascenders um, in this. Um, in type, we have two different cases. We have uppercase, those are what we would refer to as capital letters. Um, and then we have lowercase, which are um, the, the, the small letters um, in terms of, uh, you know, typing. In type design, um, a font or typeface, these terms are used interchangeably, but basically the font or typeface is the graphical representation of type. And everyone has um, its own unique characteristics and um, special designs. Now within a, a font or typeface, we have families. So for example, if the font is Times New Roman, within that we might have Roman case, we might have italic, we might have bold, we might have bold italic, or if it's let's say a Garamond, we might have um, a light, a bold, an extra bold. Um, so think of font family as your family, and then within your family there's individual family members. Type is measured in what is called points. Um, points is either spelled out or it's abbreviated PT. And points, um, the base measurement for points is 72 points per inch. So if a letter is 72 points high, it's one inch high. And then obviously if it's 36, which is half of 72, that would be one inch high. And then 18 would be a quarter inch high. Type is also measured um, in a lot of cases in what are called picas. And pica is basically one sixth of an inch. And to relate it back to points, there are 12 points in one pica. We generally will use picas in print design, um, and picas are designated by just the letter P. So if I said 16P, that refers to 16 pica. If I said 16PT, that would be 16 points. Another concept that we have to understand is the concept of line spacing. Um, in design, we call that leading. So it's not leading, it's leading. And basically, this is the horizontal spacing between um, lines of type. And we use the baseline as how we do that, how we measure it. So it's the, the space between baseline to baseline of two lines of type. Um, in most software programs, the default leading is 120% of the type size. So for example, if the type size is set at 12 points, the leading would be set at 14.4 um, points. So here's an example. So leading is measured from the baseline of the line above to the baseline of the line below. And we're going to do an example of this um, so you get some practice with this. The next concept that we have is the um, concept of spacing between um, letters in a word or in a line of type. And this is called tracking. So tracking is the overall space between a group of letters. So in the first example, we've got increased tracking, uh, or excuse me, decreased tracking, where the words and the letters are smushed together. Um, here's regular tracking, and then here's extended or increased tracking. Now when you have decreased tracking, or increase tracking, that will affect the readability and legibility of the type. So by using regular tracking, that creates a nice readable type as opposed to increasing or decreasing it, which would interfere with readability. The next concept we have to talk about is 
kerning. Now, where tracking is the spacing between all the letters in a word, line, sentence, kerning um, is adjusting just the space between two letters, two individual letters. So here we have the kerning between the A and the V, and then we can negatively kern or bring them together just the space between the A and the V. We're not affecting the space between the L and the A, but just the A and the V. One way that I remember kerning is kerning is characters. You know, characters kerning sounds alike. Um, so, all right, so let's get on to some tips. Um, <clears throat> so here's some tips from um, about type. The same author as our design book, um, Robin Williams, um, also did a great book. Um, this was in the um, early 90s and it was called The Mac is Not a Typewriter because a lot of times when we were starting to use the computer a lot of people were just coming off the typewriter. So I, I give you a link down here to the actual book. Um, so it, it might be beneficial for you to review that um, and it's a free book so it's a free downloaded PDF file. So let's go ahead and get into some tips. So the first tip is in design, we only use one space after punctuation in or between sentences. Um, so for example, um, if you were typing in a word processor, Microsoft Word will put two spaces at the end of every sentence. That's not correct when we're doing it with design. So there's only one space after any um, period or punctuation. Um, another area that we have to talk about is correct use of quotes and apostrophes. When we look at our keyboard, what we think are the quote keys, these are actually the inch and the foot mark. They're not the correct quote or apostrophes. So here's an example of the correct double open quote, and here's an example of the correct close quote. So you'll notice that it has a little kind of swash and then it goes up and a swash and goes down for the upper. And depending on what typeface, it may look a little differently in terms of the design, but it actually is opposite. If you see each one of them, that's an opposite. So we want to make sure that we do that, and we're going to do an exercise um, in doing this. Um, another important thing to understand is the difference between a hyphen, an M dash, and an N dash. So a hyphen basically is the shortest of the three types of dashes, and we use it for when we combine words like well-being, advanced level, um, or for phone numbers um, and social security numbers. The next type of dash is called an M dash and basically it's a much longer. So here is the example and the M dash is actually the size of the letter M. The next type of dash is called an N dash and it basically is the size of a letter N. And we use that with things like um, inclusion of dates, so, so like July 9th through uh, August 17th. This is an N dash, or page numbers, that's an N dash, and that's the correct use of it. Now the other thing that we have is we also have special characters. So where do you find the special characters? Well obviously they're under the numbers um, on our keyboard, but there's lots more special characters. So in the Adobe products there's a, a panel called Glyphs, and that's where we're going to find all of our special characters. And again, we're going to do a, a, an example of this um, for our hands-on activity. All right, so um, one of the things that we have to do is, you know, use the correct um, types of characters and dashes and things. So let's go ahead and give some examples. So one of the things that um, we need to make sure we understand is when you do time, it's lowercase a period m period and lowercase p period m period all right um, so when you're doing that make sure you're always using lowercase and you're using the the periods between them now if i'm meeting with you at 6 p.m you just put 6 p.m you don't have to put 6 0 0 p.m um, but if it's 6.30, I have to put that obviously in there. If you are meeting with someone from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. 
I have to I don't put in the first p.m. I just put in the second p.m. and it's assumed that this is uh, 6 30 p.m. to 10 p.m. however if it goes from evening into afternoon you would put 10 a.m. to 10, uh, to 2 p.m. so that people know that it's a span now when we talk about um, days and months you always spell out the um, days and months so for example if you know an event is going to happen on April 2nd you write out April 2nd all right you want to avoid this type of numeration because people have to think about that well what does that really mean the other thing is in other countries this is actually means something different so if I was in Europe this would actually mean the first of February in 2011 as opposed to the United States which is just January 2nd 2011 so you really should spell out January 2nd February 1st um, and always make sure you do um, the um, days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, spell those out. Do not abbreviate those. The other thing that you should always um, spell out is the use of um, states. So, for example, Massachusetts. You would not abbreviate that to MA. Um, same thing with, um, you know, spelling out proper terms. Atlantic Ocean, that should always be capitalized. Um, the only time you would shorten the um, state is if you're putting in a mailing address. That would be the correct mailing address. Um, we don't put in, you know, Cambridge, Massachusetts on our, an envelope. We would put just Cambridge, MA. Um, telephone numbers. Um, generally, you do not have to put in the preceding one. Most people know that you have to put a, a number one in um, if you're doing a long distance. So if you're doing 1 800, you really don't need to do 1 800. You just need to put 800 you know, dash, five, 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 one, two, one, two. Um, so, and you're going to use hyphens um, between the numbers, all right? The only time you have to put in uh, more information if you're doing an international number, so you need to put in the country code um, before the actual telephone number. When you're doing numbering, you want to spell out one through nine, and then anything above 10 um, you put in the numbers the actual 10 11 12 so you put in 1011 <clears throat> if a sentence begins with a number like a year you should spell it out um, in written format um, percentages you should always use the correct symbol um, and use it like if it was 50 percent you would put five zero percent in terms of, of the symbol you're always going to spell out millions, billions, trillions. Um, so that's those are the important things there. Now another important thing is don't use underlines. Um, underline the only time we use underlining in design is when we're using hyperlinks. Um, so if you need to emphasize something, use bold or italics, um, or possibly change the the, the size. Um, you all know that when you are um, doing something with capital letters is considered shouting and that's considered poor design. Capital letters also decrease the readability so don't use all capitals. Um, if it was just for one word like sale that's fine but not an entire paragraph of capital letters. The other thing that um, we have to worry about is avoiding hyphenations um, you would never hyphenate somebody's name or a, a proper place. You would never hyphenate a headline. Um, I've given you this link to some do's and don'ts about hyphenation, and we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to do this um, in one of our activities. The next concept that we need to worry about is something called widows and orphans. Um, basically, a widow is a very short line of type, usually one word. Um, and it's either at the end of a paragraph or when you go to another paragraph. Um, so we'll, we're going to show you some examples of this. Again, I've given you an, a nice article that I want you to review on what widows and orphans are. And then um, we'll do orphans. And basically, orphan is a single line. And again, I've given you a nice article on this. So go ahead and review those different um, things 
Um, let's see, what else do we have? All right, I think that's it for this lecture. Um, and now we're going to do some hands-on activities um, along with another lecture on type styles.